Hi, I'm Josh, and today I'm going to show you how to make the Indian sweet dessert gulab jamun. Before I begin, please take a second to like and subscribe. Thanks. There are two ways to make gulab jamun, either with condensed milk or full fat milk powder. I'll show you both. If using full fat milk powder, you'll need one cup of full fat milk powder, half a cup plain flour, quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder, quarter of a teaspoon of cardamom pot, one teaspoon or 20 grams of ghee or butter, one teaspoon of lemon juice, and two tablespoons of milk. If using a can of condensed milk, that's one can, two cups of plain flour, two teaspoons of melted ghee or butter, half a teaspoon of baking powder, quarter of a teaspoon of cardamom powder. For the syrup, you'll also need three cups of sugar, three cups of water, eight cracked cardamom pods, half a teaspoon of cardamom powder, quarter of a teaspoon of saffron, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and one and a half teaspoons of rose water. If using powdered milk, start by adding the powdered milk flour, baking powder and cardamom powder to a bowl and mixing them thoroughly. Add in the melted ghee and incorporate to form a breadcrumb type mix. Mix the lemon juice and milk together and then slowly incorporate into the mix a little at a time until you create a dough that is pliable but doesn't stick to your hands. If using condensed milk, add the flour, baking powder and cardamom powder to a bowl and mix through. Add in the melted ghee and incorporate to form a breadcrumb type mix. Tip in the condensed milk and then slowly incorporate until you create a dough. A dough that is pliable but doesn't stick to your hands. You may need to add more flour, a teaspoon at a time if it is still sticky. Once your dough is ready, make a long sausage shape Cut it in half and then cut each of those pieces in half another three times to end up with 16 roughly identical sized pieces of dough. Take a piece and roll it between the palms of your hands to create a soft, round, shiny ball. It should have a glossy and slightly oily surface so it won't stick to your plate. Make all of the balls the same way and set aside. Make sure the balls are smooth with no cracks in the surface. This could let in oil and make them crack. Now for the syrup. Add a large pan to the stove and add the sugar, water, cardamom powder, cracked cardamom pods, saffron, rose water and lemon juice. Heat on low to medium heat until fully dissolved, stirring every minute to stop the sugar sticking. Turn up the heat and simmer until you get a light syrup that just clings to your spoon. You don't want anything too thick as it won't sink into the gulab jamon balls. Now heat up some oil or ghee on a medium heat to 150 celsius. Too hot and you'll end up with burnt gulab jamon on the outside before they are cooked all the way through. Use a thermometer to keep an eye on the temperature as you cook. Add the balls carefully and stir gently but continuously until they rise to the surface. Continue to stir every minute for around 10 minutes to ensure they are evenly cooked and coloured. After 10 minutes, carefully take out one of the gulab jamons and cut it in half with a knife to see if it's ready. If there's still dough, it's not cooked yet, so continue for a few more minutes. The one on the left was after 5 minutes, and the one on the right was after 10, and it is perfect. When ready, turn off the heat and carefully lower the gulab jamon into the hot syrup mixture. Stir gently, then leave to soak for around 3 hours. Stir occasionally so they are coated. They will double in size, so make sure your pan is big enough. Using a frying pan is fine. Just move them around every half an hour so they can sit and soak up the syrup. You can serve directly or refrigerate for a day or two until needed. Serve with ice cream or on their own in syrup with a sprinkle of toasted almonds. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and check out this and many more recipes on my website at thecurrykid.co.uk.